Okay, so today uh, we are going to another type of amplifier. Uh, in the last few classes, we have talked about the common uh, emitter amplifier of different configurations, like uh, amplifier with uh, say fixed bias or phase bias, and most importantly, the voltage divider bias, right? We have seen that okay, the gain of the common emitter amplifier was uh, moderate. Is given by sometimes uh, given by minus gm times rc, sometimes given by r. That is the maximum gain what you can have. And if you have some coupling loss and other things, something like that, then the gain will be somewhat less. And the input and the output resistance for uh, common emitter amplifier was moderate. Input impedance was given by or input resistance was given by r pi, generally by r pi. Resistance given by typically by rc, the collector resistance, typically. So moderate gain, moderate input is moderate output resistance. That is all about the common emitter amplifier and since everything is moderate, so that's why people prefer for uh, common emitter amplifier. Now today, uh, so since uh, we, since uh, this uh, uh, resistor, uh, bipolar junction transistor, they have three uh, terminals, emitter, base and collector. And we start with uh, dealing emitter as the common terminal. Now let's people thought that, okay, let's, let's do the other thing. Let's, uh, let's consider the base to be my common terminal. Okay, base to my common terminal and we apply the input at the emitter side and let's collect at the collector side. So the configuration, configuration will be somewhat different. So this is the configuration, you have this bipolar junction transistor and uh, this is properly biased, right? So this is biased through this RB resistance and uh, we are assuming that there should not be any small signal, there should not be any uh, AC signal at the base, there should not be any AC signal present at the base. So uh, for, for your uh, common emitter configuration, you have noticed perhaps that emitter is considered to be at the uh, AC ground, right, AC ground, emitter was, was held at AC ground. That means there is a small signal present at the emitter terminal. Um, but in case of your emitter resistance, uh, in that case you have seen that this emitter was grounded to RE, that one. Now for common base, suppose there might be some uh, small signal like which might develop at the base, you know, to just get rid of that, then uh, this uh, capacitor is connected, this CB is connected. If some uh, small signal is present over there, by virtue of this capacitor, this will be grounded. So eventually, the potential at this point is held at AC0, not at DC0. Voltage is not a, is, this voltage is not equal to zero, remember. This voltage is constant, right? This voltage is a constant voltage. So voltage at the base terminal is a constant one, just like a DC. There might be some small signal, some fluctuation might be present at the base terminal, but that will be simply bypassed by this capacitor, CB, right? And we are applying the input, okay, so that part, yes, and uh, then we are applying the input uh, at, uh, at the uh, emitter terminal. At the emitter terminal, we have input, and for the timing, let's assume that uh, there is no, uh, and associated with the signal source. So I, ideal condition and I incorporate this source resistance into our account. And emitter resistance there, emitter to ground and this collector resistance RC and collector terminal is serving. Okay. Now first of all we are going to find out the gain of this kind of amplifier. Common base, common base configuration input is applied at the emitter, output is obtained at the So how to do that? One second we have to draw the corresponding small signal model. So small signal model is already developed over there and there it is a little bit uh, a simplistic one. Uh, okay, let me let me draw the common image uh, of this particular small signal model from different perspective. Let me draw like this. So suppose this is your base terminal, this is your emitter terminal. This is the collector terminal, right? Between what you have? Between base diameter, what you have? Uh, you have a resistor, no? What is that? R pi. And that voltage is d pi. Right? And between collector diameter, what you have? Current. You have a voltage dependent current source. What is yeah. that? GMP pi. Okay? For the timing, let's forget about R naught. Suppose there is no R naught. If R0 is there, then it should be connected to collector emitter. Then for this circuit, what we have? Well, from base to VCC, there is RB. Right? 
to VCC. This is RB. Right? So base and from base to ground, there is a capacitor. There is a capacitor, CB. I am assuming that the base is held at the constant voltage. So if I consider the two terminals of RB, at one side you have a constant voltage that is some PB, other side you have some VCC. Both of them are constant. So, therefore, the two terminals of RB in the small signal model is held at the zero level. Right? So, RB will not be there in the small signal model. So, this base is basically connected to right? Emitter to ground, you have a resistance like this RD, this resistance, and collected to VCC that means connected to AC ground, have another resistance RC and we obtain the output from this terminal V out, right? And where to connect the input? Yes, the capacitor is there but in this model, in this particular unit, we will, uh, so before we start this uh, unit, we have said that whenever you have a capacitor, let's assume that the capacitor is providing a zero impedance bar. Right, and zero impedance. So from ground to base is zero impedance path, it's short circuit. So and we are applying this input at the emitter, right? So input is over there. This is your V in or V S, whatever it may be, V in or V S. This is the circuit, and that can be uh, simplified like this, this one, which has already been shown. Right. This RE and R pi, both of them are in parallel. Emitter to ground, emitter to ground. If we just take a look at this over here. Emitter to ground, you have RE. Emitter to ground, you have R pi. So if this is my emitter terminal, I have just drawn this one upside down. Upside down. Base upwards, emitter downwards here. And there, emitter upwards, base downwards. Because now base is my uh, reference terminal. And that is our practice to make the reference at the bottom, on the ground at the bottom, right? So emitter, base is ground. Emitter to base, you have two resistances, R i and uh, R e and R pi. This is my collector terminal. Collector to emitter, you have G m V pi. Look at the from collector to emitter. That is the detection. So in this figure, it is downwards, and that figure, leftwards. I've just gone like this. And then connected to ground, you have this RC. And we have uh, connected this, uh, R, this voltage V in over there, a VS so emitted to ground. Right? So this circuit that I have drawn over there and that side which has already been drawn, these two are similar. Okay. Then we are interested in finding out the ratio V out upon VS. What is V? Just apply features uh, voltage law there. What is what is the relation between V pi? Minus. That's minus. 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 Because V pi is this V pi is the voltage between the base and emitter with respect to the, that is V B. Right? So this side positive, this side negative. And this is applied with respect to the base. That means V E B. So V S is equal to minus V pi. What is my V, v out? This GM V pi current is flowing. So minus GM V pi current will flow through this. Right, so minus GMP pi times RC, that is GM VS times RC. So AV turns out to be the voltage gain, turns out to be V out, that is equal to GM times RC. There is no phase difference. For common emitter, you have seen that there is a minus sign. This side you have no phase difference, only GM RC. So the question is that, is it the only reason for which we have, uh, we have uh, uh, explored this common emitter, common uh, base amplifier? Because the only difference is that with respect to your meter, only the minus sign is absent. Is it the only thing for which we have gone for this uh, common base amplifier? Is it the reason? Hopefully not. Hopefully. Now, say for example, I am having a common base amplifier with a gain of say 100, right? And uh, I am having some 1 millivolt peak to peak signal with some uh, non-zero source resistance, say 50 ohm source resistance, what do we expect? What do we expect? You should expect there is there is a common base amplifier mm -hmm. with a gain of say 100. 
you have some one, one millivolt uh, uh, bit-to-bit signal, right? Uh, and with some non-zero source resistance, if you want to say, for example, what do you expect? Output side? You can expect 100 millivolt. Uh, uh, close yeah. to the, some loss you should express and say, let me say 100 millivolt. Uh, uh, close to 100, it's 90 millivolt or 85 millivolt, close to that. But surprisingly not. And here lies the first. Surprisingly not, and it is nowhere near 100. Nowhere near 100. You can say that okay, 100, it might not be 100, there might be some loss, it might be say 95 millivolt, 90 millivolt, max to max 80 millivolt. Right? Thing like that, okay, might be 80 millivolt, cannot be less than that. There could be some coupling loss, might be 80 millivolt. But that is not the case. That is not the case. Right? Why? Before we question, before we answer this question, let's for the time being, let's. Uh, so same circuit. Yeah, this is same circuit. The only difference is that this time the uh, signal source is also having some non-zero source resistance because the example, the problem that we posed last time, in that particular problem, uh, the source resistance was there. Yeah. You, you may ask yourself last time there was no source resistance. You have got minus zero, yeah. plus zero, or still. This time you have got some source resistance, so if I add some source resistance, will it make any difference? That is the question you might ask. So let's do something, let's, okay, so let's analyze the same circuit with a non-zero source resistance. Oh. And let's see whether uh, this can improve your understanding on it. If I have the non-zero source resistance over there, so the entire circuit will be the same, the only difference is that this time I have connected this RS also. This the previous RS was absent, so VS and VPI are the same, but this time RS was also present, non-zero RS. So this time you cannot say that VS and VPI they are same, yeah. Yeah. right? Uh, because you have some non-zero RS uh, present over there between the emitter and the signal source. Okay. Well, and everything is the same. There is no change. Now uh, you uh, go for uh, applying KCL at the node uh, E emitter terminal. You have how many currents? One, two, three, four. Uh, one, two, three, four currents, right? Four currents. Uh, so uh, this is the current one current which is entering through this. That is GM VPI. This current. What about this current? This current is V pi upon R pi. What about this current? V pi upon R e. What about this current? Now, what is the difference between these two? No. If I just consider. What is that current? What is that current? Here it is minus. Here it is minus V pi. Here it is V s. V s minus of minus V pi. Right. That is Vs plus Vpi upon Rs. That is total current, so all the currents are summing up to be 0. Yes, yeah. That is equal to 0. Now, if you take uh, Vpi in one side and Vs in other side, then ultimately what you are getting, ultimately what you are getting, Vpi is equal to minus Vs upon Rs multiplied with this one. Right? Minus Vpi, uh, sorry, minus Vs upon Rs multiplied with this one. And what about your V out? Same thing. V out is equal to minus Gm Vpi Rc because Gm will take this direction. So minus Gm Vpi will flow through this. So V out is minus Gm Vpi times Rc, this one. And the voltage gain turns out to be V out upon Vs that is equal to Gm Rc by Rs multiplied with something. Achha, sir, Rs introduced one Gm Rc. Yes, GMRC, if suppose RS was not there, suppose RS was not there, in that case it should be simply GMRC. Yeah, GMRC. Right? Now if you have RS, mm -hmm. if you have RS, is it less or greater than that? What do you feel? Uh, obviously less. Right? Less. Why? Right? Because you what you have. In the numerator, you have R5 plus 1 upon beta, parallel RD, parallel RS. So that thing should be, that combination should be less than RS. This combination should be less than Rs, no? Yeah. This combination should be less than Rs. Yeah. And here the denominator of Rs. Yeah. So numerator by denominator less than 1. Okay. So this product is less than GMRC. Less than GMRC. So, and let, let's assume that uh, since uh, you, you get uh, this R pi upon 1 plus beta, let's take some value. We can also take some numerical value for that. Typical Rs is small, 50 ohm, 50 ohms for example. RS is small, 50 ohms, right? Mm -hmm. And RE is typically in the range of say a few kilo ohms, say 1 kilo ohms, 2 kilo ohms, something like that, or hundreds of ohms. And RS is typically small, 50 ohms, R pi upon 1 plus beta, this is in the range of few uh, 
you tens of ohms. For example, your beta is equal to 100, alpha is equal to 5 kilo ohms. So what is alpha by 1 plus beta? 5000 by 100, that means uh, 50, close to that. So there, are, uh, uh, if I just con consider this parallel combination, one second, this is in the vicinity of say uh, RS, close to that. If you take the ratio, yeah. So if you take the ratio, okay, okay if GMRC is 100, you can argue okay, it should be might be like let's say 80 millivolt or something like that. Something like you, you can think somewhat less than that. But what I have told, if you have a one millivolt signal, one millivolt peak to peak signal with a so common base amplifier with a gain of 100, you never expect. You would never expect an output voltage any higher close to 100 millivolt. Any higher close to 100 millivolt. Much, much less. Much, much less as compared to 100 millivolt. Now, before I uh, then uh, obviously much ask that why uh, we should uh, introduce this common base amplifier at all in this course. Or why does it exist at all? Common base. The life was good with common amplifier. amplifier. I have started my discussion, today's discussion with that, uh, with that note that uh, with a common amplifier you have a moderate gain, moderate uh, input impedance, moderate output impedance, everything is moderate. So why should you go for a common amplifier, common base configuration? We need it for some special applications. We never wanted to reduce the gain. Yes, some other application. Some other application. Is, so, Congress is not used for increasing the gain. Right? But for some other applications. Right. How many of you have seen funnels? In the household we have this. What is the use? Any oil. Any liquid, for example, any liquid. Yeah. What, what is the reason of using this? You, yeah. Try to understand. Try to understand. Let's 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 add some kilos of liquid. Suppose you have, you have got a funnel. Suppose if you have, say, um, a water bottle and you have a jar of water. You have a big jar with the cross section is typically large and you have a water bottle whose cross section is not that large, small. Now, if you make any attempt to pour this water from that jar itself into that bottle, Speed. Right. What do, what, what do you expect? We expect that most of them will be lost. Most of them. Ultimately, you will be getting somewhat, uh, say, say 40% or 30% of this liquid. Now, instead of doing that, instead of uh, directly pouring the water from that uh, jar to this bottle, if you can have, if you can manage to have that kind of funnel with uh, almost close uh, cross-section. That means the input cross-section of the funnel is close to that of jar and the output cross-section is close to that of a bottle. Right. If you can manage to have this kind of funnel, then what you can have? You can minimize that loss as much as possible. Loss cannot be made zero, cannot be made zero. You can at least minimize it. But does this particular funnel add something? Add some uh, water? Is it a source of water? So for this transmission, for this propagation, this is used. Same thing also happens in your class also, right? What happens in a class? I am not uh, undermining anyone. It happens. A class of 40, class of 50. Might be say 5 or 10 students, they have understood the concept very well. There might be some students who would like to know the concept, like to understand the concept, but they don't have uh, this, uh, you know, uh, they don't have this, uh, I think to catch this concept right in the class. It might happen. What is what? Uh, what is the way out? 
वर्ड नॉर्मली डू होता है टिपिकली वर्ड इधर दो स्टूडेंट्स फॉर इंटरेस्ट इन नोइंग समथिंग बट दे कैनॉट अप्रोच द टीचर यस फाइंड आउट व्हाट हैपेंस दे अप्रोच द अदर सीनियर स्टूडेंट्स और द फेलो बैचमेट टू अंडरस्टैंड द कॉन्सिक्वेंसेस इट्स नॉट दैट दे आर एडिंग सम न्यू कांसेप्ट those fellow they are not adding some new concept thing is that they are might be some barrier for those students for the teacher but they cannot have the same pace the way the teacher is uh, teaching and the way that particular guy is uh, is just uh, getting those concept suppose there is there is a there is a mismatch there is mismatch in synchronization so that's why those people they approach to uh, the their batchmate or sometimes uh, the seniors Not a new concept, concept, but now the concept will be propagated in a much more smoother way. Can you get the point? So there could have been something. There could have been something input of that particular amplifier. What we have seen for a common unit amplifier, the input resistance, output resistance, both of them. Gain was moderated. Here also for a common base amplifier, I cannot get the full. I mean the gain is say here for common base amplifier the gain is say GMRC. Say let it be say fifty or hundred, yeah. but you cannot this uh, you cannot utilize the total gain if wrong present in the circuit itself. Now let's try to explore what additional Uh, advantage we are getting out of this common base amplifier. Sometimes it seems to be additional or advantageous. Might be something related to the input impedance, right? We have calculated the input impedance for a common uh, emitter amplifier. It was found out to be close to R5. Now, impedance for a common base amplifier. The same common, the same model. So, what is the way? How how can we uh, calculate the Input resistance. Uh, what is the mechanism? Voltage. All the first of all, we have to kill all the independent voltage in the current source. All the independent we have to kill. Independent, not the dependent ones. We have to kill all the independent voltage and the current source. This GM V pi, we have made GM V pi is a dependent one. So we cannot kill this one. But we have to kill all the independent voltage and the current source. Right? So is there any independent voltage source? Yes. At the input side, you have connected something from external, so that you have to, I mean, uh, that you cannot connect over there. Then try to identify which is my input terminal. Terminal, I would like to find out the resistance. Okay, the input terminal is this emitter and base. Between these, I have to find out this terminal. So I have to connect some external voltage. Try to current being drawn by the circuit. Take the ratio. That will give you the input resistance, right? So what is that? If this voltage is V in and this current being drawn by the circuit is I in, then this ratio is V in upon I in. That will give you the value for the input resistance for a common base amplifier. We have done the same thing. We have done the same exercise for a common emitter amplifier as well. Now, the resistor circuit is the same. This part is the same. No, there is no change. So what is the relation between V in and V pi then? So here we have. Is equal to zero. So then V in and uh, equal to minus V pi, plus minus minus plus, right? So V in is equal to minus V pi, and the summation of all these currents must be equal to zero. I in plus I R e plus I R pi plus V in V pi. And if you just substitute those values, then what you are getting is like uh, I in is coming out to be minus V pi times R e parallel one plus beta. This one. If we just calculate this one entire thing, right? And then, what is your R in? I already know V in is equal to minus V pi, so this minus V pi is nothing but V in. So R in, that is upon I in, is coming out to be R e parallel R pi by one plus beta. And this typically this is controlled by this is controlled by this R pi upon one plus beta because R e is typically large with respect to R upon one plus beta. So eventually, the input resistance is governed by R pi upon one plus beta. 
R quite typically 5 kilo ohms, say for example, beta is 100, so R prime 1 plus beta is close to 50 ohms. So the input resistance of this amplifier is 50 ohms. Can we get the point? Input resistance of this amplifier is 50 ohms if R pi is equal to 5 kilo ohms and beta is equal to 100. Now, let's move to this circuit. Uh, let's move to this problem. You have a common base amplifier with gain is equal to 100. And this uh, input signal source is also having a uh, signal source resistance equal to 50 ohms. Right. So, therefore, what I can have this common base amplifier, what is that? This is basically if I have some input voltage over there, if I have some input voltage, so this is nothing but so I can, okay, let me just draw the input signal side first. This is the signal with 50 ohm surge resistance with hold peak to peak on MV. This is connected to the on base amplifier which is having some input resistance. What is the, where is the input connected? The input is connected between the emitter and the, and the ground terminal, emitter and the base. What is that value? Is how, how much? I have just now calculated R pi upon R plus beta. So you have this resistance which is connected. This is the R in, I can call it B, that means the common base configuration. And then this voltage which is developed over there, this voltage, let, let this voltage be called V in. And then we have the next stage of amplification. Right. So, what is the amount of voltage coupled at the input of the amplifier? You have this V in, na? this V in is coupled. That is basically the V pi. This V in is coupled, and then because of this V in, some voltage dependent current source will be there, GMP, the GMP pi in that form, and that kind flows to RC, and then output is developed. Remember, the voltage that is generated at the source end, the voltage that is generated at the source end is 1 millivolt. Here it is 50 ohms. For common limit amplifier, what about that resistance? What was that? Say 5 kilo ohms. If R pi is equal to 5 kilo ohms, that was 5 kilo ohms. So 50 ohms here, 5 kilo ohms here, so you can expect that almost this entire voltage will be coupled. 50 by, uh, sorry, uh, 5000 by 5050. Calculate this one, 5000 in the numerator, 5050, 5050 five in the denominator, almost close to 500, uh, 500 by 505, 99%, 98%, something like that, 97%, something like that. What happens here? 50 ohms, 50 ohms, they are comparable. They are comparable. So right at the input, right at the input, you have a drop of 50%. So if I have 1 millivolt there, this 1 millivolt is not coupled at the input of the amplifier. Only 50.5 millivolt, only 0.5 millivolt is coupled. And then you go for your uh, gain, then you go for your gain, let there be 100 gain. So 0.5 uh, millivolt into 100, maximum 50. Lost and then if the other loss is there, then it will be even less. Yeah. We have neglected this R0 tolerance and all these things. Yeah. Okay, so don't expect that, okay, it is uh, 100. Because there is a significant drop. And that drop is known as a coupling drop, a coupling loss. Right. Now you may argue that, okay, so our life was good with a common emitter. Okay, we have understood some uh, limitations. For a, for a voltage, uh, for voltage amplifier, you know that for a voltage amplifier, the input resistance should be as high as possible. Voltage. Input resistance should be as high as possible. But that is not the case for a common base. For a common base, what we have observed, this input resistance is very small. Right. So, okay, so. That's good and uh, let's go for output resistance calculation. For output resistance calculation, what we need to do is that uh, we have to kill all the voltage and current source and connect the output from the, I mean connect the test voltage from the outside. So here 
this is the test voltage which, which is connected between the collector and the collector and the base and measure the test current ix find out the ratio that will be resistance and if you apply kcl at this particular node uh, gmp pi plus v by upon r pi plus v by upon r e plus r s that is equal to zero which uh, results v pi to be zero and then from where we can find out that r out is equal to vx upon ix which is equal to simple your rc right r out is equal to rc so output resistance is comparable but output resistance is pretty small in the range of few tens of ohms so where can you use where can you use this kind of amplifier if the input resistance is very small remember our initial discussion our initial discussion where i have mentioned that uh, signal source resistance and the amplifier resistance there might be some relation if you can remember rs and rn i have used two different terminology rs and rn sometimes rs is much much less than rn this is much much greater than rn now when the rs is much much less than rn we always regard this as a voltage amplifier when r is the signal source resistance is much much less than the input resistance of the amplifier on the other hand if r is is much much greater than r in that case we have to regard this as a current amplifier and the input should be regarded as a current source input right so therefore but i guess we have already noticed that the input resistance for a common base amplifier is typically small so instead of considering this as a voltage amplifier let's visualize the same thing from a current amplifier perspective suppose i am having a current source like this is with a resistance rs and this rs is much much larger with respect to your input resistance of the amplifier and then we have the rest of the circuit as before and we have this current uh, through a load the current is given by i out that is equal to that is flowing through rl and we are going to find out the the voltage uh, the i out upon i in once again i have to apply the kcl at this particular at this particular node if i apply the kcl then this is the expression i in plus v pi upon r d plus v pi upon r pi plus gm v pi the summation of all these four currents equal to zero and then from here uh, we can represent this v pi in terms of i in by virtue of this expression and uh, over here if this gm v pi if this kind is gm v pi that can should be minus gm v pi and there is a division of current the branch branching is there So, what is the current which is flowing through RL? This I out. What is that? RC upon RC plus RL, right? GMB pi times RC upon RC plus RL. And if you take this ratio, then uh, your I uh, out upon I in that ratio is coming out to be R pi by one plus beta close to that. That is equal to beta upon one plus beta, and that is equal to R. Right? That means there is no current gain. Alpha means what? Positive but less than that. And that should be the case because for a common emitter amplifier or common emitter amplifier, your input was the base. For the applied the base, output was obtained at the collector. But for the common base amplifier, the input is applied at the emitter and the output is obtained at the collector. So what is the input current? It is basically the emitter current. What is the output current? It is basically the current. Almost same. Almost same or somewhat less. I B journal. I B right. So if I if I find out is I E upon uh, rather I C upon I E, that ratio is equal to alpha. I C equal alpha I. Right. So beta alpha both of them are current. Remember both of them are current. Beta is a common emitter current. And alpha is known to be the common base current. There is no current gain. There is no current gain. So beta is the common base. Beta is known to be the common emitter current. What is what is beta? What is the expression for beta? Beta is equal to I C by I. I C by I. It's a common emitter. Why common emitter? Because input is applied at the base. Input is applied at the base. Output is applied at the collector. So collector kind is your your output kind, base kind is your input kind. Common emitter kind. Common emitter current. Right. And alpha. What is alpha? Alpha is equal to I C upon I E. Collector kind is output kind. Emitter kind is input kind. Common base current. 
So sometimes you may argue. You may argue that okay, I'm not getting any gain. I'm not getting any current gain. If I have say 1 milliampere of emitter current, and with alpha is equal to say 0.98, you have 0.98 milliampere of collector current. So I can directly connect using a wire only. No? Then why all these stops? Meaningless. I have 1 milliampere of say emitter current, and I, I, I'd like to have, if, if alpha is equal to so 1.98 milliampere of collector current. So that can be achieved through using a wire only, simple wire. Direct connection. But sometimes it's not possible. Because some, sometimes you have to move from a very high resistance path to very high resistance path to a very low or moderate resistance. You know, current source, ideal current source is having a resistance of infinite. Ideal voltage source is having a resistance of zero. Ideal current source is having a resistance of infinite. So this R is that we have shown over there, this R is equal to infinity, of course, very large, say hundreds of kilohertz. Right? And uh, that uh, that load resistance, say for example, this load typically say say, say tens of kilohertz. R is say, say five kilohertz, for example. And that R is is very large, say uh, one mega. So you cannot directly come. So you need a buffer that does this conversion. This very high to very high resistance at the input side, a moderate resistance at the output side. And this is done through of this common base amplifier. Apart from that, so that so that uh, observation we are making from the uh, gain perspective, and whenever with the same common base amplifier in your, uh, I mean, in the next unit, uh, while we discuss the, the frequency response characteristics, then you'll see that this common emitter and common base combination, they are cascaded apart from some operation which you cannot obtain using either using a common emitter or using common base in isolation. Some marvelous operation you can expect if you can have this common emitter common base cascading operation. The common emitter common base, if they are connected in the cascade, you can see that uh, both the gain as well as the bandwidth of the amplifier can be extended, can be enhanced. That you cannot have using a sim simple uh, single emitter or a sim single stage common base. Both of them are having their difficulties, both of them are having their uh, shortcomings. So, for the result, that one, because that we will discuss in the, ne the next unit. As of now, let's try to understand one point. That uh, for common base amplifier, your input resistance is and the output resistance is very large or rather moderate, you can say, and uh, because of which this common base amplifier can be used as a current buffer. Current buffer, that means there is no gain, there is a, it is not in the port, it's a current buffer, why? Because there is a voltage gain, GMRC, voltage gain is there, but you cannot have the full, uh, you cannot exploit the, the full advantage of this. Uh, a voltage gain because of this very small resistance. Right. Better to visualize this common base as a current buffer. That means there is no gain in the current, no gain in the current value, but there is a change in the resistance from very small, for, for, it's very small to moderate. Right. That's a current buffer, right? So since there is a current buffer, so there can also be a, 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 a I mean, you can also have a, a voltage buffer. Right? And uh, you have only one uh, other terminal left to deal with. That is a collector terminal, right? So let's move to the common collector. Let's move to the common collector amplifier. Right? Common collector amplifier means the collector is terminal. So far, you have seen that collector is used as an output terminal. Right? But this time, let's uh, use this uh, collector terminal as the common terminal. This time, the collector terminal is used as a common and as before, the input is applied at the base end and the output is of the emitter end. Input is applied at the base end over here, capacitor, coupling capacitor, for example, and the output is obtained from the emitter side, right? So, we have the very simple biasing arrangement over there, very simple. 
fixed bias, very simple biasing arrangement. He can also have some voltage division bias over there. And let's draw the small signal model. Straightforward. Between base two emitter, you have this resistance R pi. Right? Between collector two emitter, you have this GMV pi. And so we have also incorporated that uh, output resistance R0 between collector two emitter. Remember, this output resistance is connected between the collector and emitter, not between the collector and the ground. This collector and emitter. So between collector and emitter, eventually it is there between the emitter and the ground. And you have another additional resistance, uh, RE, that is that which serves as output resistance here. This time RE serves as output resistance connected to the ground, and the input signal is applied over there, VS, and the collector is at AC ground. Collector is at VCC. That means this is at AC ground, small signal ground, right? Okay, so let's apply KVL. KVL in this loop. Vs is equal to V pi plus V out. Okay. Any doubt? Vs is equal to KVL. It is voltage now. This Vs is equal to this voltage. This voltage is equal to this voltage plus this voltage, V pi plus V out. Right. What is your voltage? Yeah. This is constant is supply. Five volt supply, ten volt supply. Twelve volt supply. It's not DC ground. This is twelve volt, say for example. For biasing, need to have a PCC, right? Now the DC apply. As I said, I can't even remember. R4, 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 R4,
the correct term is held at constant voltage dc constant dc so zero ac okay input signal is also having some non zero source resistance this coupling capacitor you can ignore you have this voltage division r1 r2 this resistance r is present this part i think is clear this part is clear signal model of the bjt right you have this re also right hand side left hand side you have this r1 parallel r2 both of them are between base to ground from base to ground you have r1 parallel r2 right and uh, then what you have we have uh, the signal so non zero source resistance that is rs clear okay and now uh, we are in the process of calculating the the input resistance of the amplifier input resistance of the amplifier the same signal model can be drawn like this to make it much more uh, compact because that is our normal process uh, uh, tactics to make the the common terminal in the bottom this time the collector is the common terminal typically collector is placed at the top over there and we have placed the collector over there here only because the collector is a common terminal so we have drawn side upside down reference reference terminal right so between uh, base to emitter you have this r pi don't write don't draw r pi always from here to here don't draw like this this should be between base to emitter this is where this is emitter so this is r pi this is collector collector to emitter you have gm v pi but this is your v pi voltage base to emitter this voltage okay what is r ground that means base to collector collector is at ground right re between emitter and ground r not between collector and emitter collector is already grounded so re r r not they are in parallel okay this is your vs this is rs acha sir tahole amra dono common base e korle apnar base ta ke a reference nebo erokom kore just structure ta ke ektu change kore so that it uh, will be easier for you to deal with the particular set every time we draw we observe the circuit so we this is our normal uh, tactics to uh, visualize this i mean the reference terminal should be at the at the bottom the reference ground terminal okay so let's let's assume that uh, over here this resistance is ri looking at between this terminal and this terminal without considering this around parallel r2 and if i around parallel r2 into our account then the in by rib okay relation between ri and rib ri is the resistance looking over here and if you incorporate and rib is what rib is the resistance looking between this two terminal so between this two terminal if i consider this uh, entire circuit this entire circuit this part this part of the circuit provides some resistance which is equal to rib and once again if you consider this r1 parallel r2 into this into then the resistance given by ri right so ri is not, nothing but rib parallel r1 parallel right and uh, if i call okay voltage is vs fine but this voltage is not vs because there is a drop. what is that drop how to find out suppose this voltage if i call okay this voltage equal to vp the base voltage what is that um, if this resistance is ri okay ri, RI and if you have rs there so rs uh, ri upon ri plus rs into vs that is equal to vb right now if this voltage then i have to equate this vb with this current ib because this is the current right so what is vb this voltage is vb plus minus here this, this is how much this this car this voltage plus this voltage mm -hmm. right what is that voltage here the current there R5. this current is how much gm v pi gm by gm v pi is nothing but beta times i or hf times i i because now i, I can use these two parameters interchangeably i v uh, gm beta times i 
So this is B I B, this is beta times I B, this total current is beta 1 plus beta times I B. That is flowing through R E parallel unknown combination. So I B plus that is this voltage plus we have this voltage I B times R pi that is equal to V B, right? So what we are getting this V B is equal to I B into R pi plus 1 plus beta times R E parallel unknown. If you take the ratio V B upon I B, this V B upon I B is what? This voltage is V B. This kind is so V B upon I B will give you what? Not R B. That is R I B. Over here. So what is R I B then? V B upon I B. That is equal to R pi plus one plus beta times R I parallel R not. R pi plus one plus beta times R I parallel R not. Right? If you take this uh, V, uh, I mean uh, R1 and R2 in consideration, then your Ri is equal to R1 parallel R2 parallel R2. But if you just take a look at this Rib, that is the uh, input resistance for this common amplifier, what is that? R pi you have already have this good old R pi. Apart from that, you have what? which is a new term, new contribution, 1 plus beta times Re parallel R0. And this plus beta times, beta times Re is typically large. Re is suppose in the range of which is a hundred, so some hundreds of kilohertz with some R pi, so that means close to say a few hundreds of kilohertz. So for the common character amplifier, this input resistance is very large. Higher than the common emitter and common base of this. So for a common character amplifier, this input resistance is given by R pi plus one plus beta parallel R naught, and if you Take this R1 and R2 into consideration, then obviously it is not less. What is V out? V out we have already calculated this current IB into R multiplied with this R D parallel R0. If you take the ratio, if you take the ratio, then the voltage gain turns out to be this one. Yeah, now we have the two products. This factor multiplied with this charge, it is less than one. And this is also less than 1, right? So both of them are less than 1. So there are products less than 1, should be. So for a common collector amplifier, you cannot, for a common collector amplifier, you cannot have a voltage gain which is always less than 1, right? The advantage is the input resistance is large. Input resistance is large. That is the advantage you are getting, right? Is there any other advantage? Okay, so input resistance, we have already done this calculation, going to the details. So we can. And the output resistance calculation now. Input resistance, we have already seen the output is 1 to 3 times RD parallel, no? Right? And now comes the output resistance. To find out the output resistance, R out. How to calculate this one? Same thing. Same we have to make all the independent voltage and the current source inactive. At the case for and apply some test voltage from the terminal. This connected I mean your emitter terminal. Yeah. And you just measure the current which is drawn by the circuit. Take the ratio. So input side it should be. This should be shorted. Because previously there you have some single source connected between the base and the collector, between the base and the ground. This time we have to make this inactive, so that is zero, short circuit, right? So obviously R1 parallel R2 is finished. You have applied Vx there. What is the relation between Vx and Vpi? Just opposite, by minus Vx. And then uh, what you can do, uh, you have uh, this current, yeah, you apply KCL there. So Ix and Gn Vpi, these two currents are entering. And suppose these are the current which are leaving, for example. That is Vx upon R0, Vx upon Re, plus Vx upon R pi. They are same. The current that is entering and current that is leaving, they are same. And if you do the rest of the calculations, then ultimately, this Vx upon Ix, R pi upon 1 plus beta parallel Re. R pi plus 1 plus beta, what? This is basically the input resistance of common base and base. That was smaller. 
And here, for a common character amplifier, the output resistance is small. R5 parallel on plus beta in parallel with R5 by 1 plus beta in parallel with R must equals to R5 by 1 plus beta. Yes. So for a common current amplifier, your input resistance is very, very large. The output resistance is very, very small. So now try to imagine a scenario a situation where you have got some uh, sufficiently large voltage. Voltage level is satisfactory to you. You would like to drive this one. You would like a load <laughs> for which whose, whose load ratio is very small. Right at this time, suppose you have generated some voltage which is satisfactory to you. And you have some output resistance associated with that particular amplifier. You would like to drive this one. Using that particular voltage, you would like to drive some load whose load very small. Load resistance small. Suppose what I am saying, suppose you have generated have generated some voltage. Some voltage you have generated, right? That might come from the previous stages of amplification. Suppose I have generated some, uh, let it be some voltage. Some a V times V in. And that A V times V in, you are happy with this A V times V in was the actual input signal and through several stages of amplification, you have generated something with which you are happy. Along with that, this stage will provide some output resistance R out, which is typically large, typically large in the range of say kilo ohms, for example. That is there. On the other hand, what you have, you have a load. You have a load resistance RL, which is typically small. So let me write. This is say kilo ohms, and say this is in ohms, and you are happy with this. So on one side you have you have generated everything. You have few stages of amplification, you have generated something using some amplifier, common emitter, common case, whatever it may be, with output resistance that is typically large. Not that large, but typically large, kilo ohms. You already have seen that for common emitter, common case, output resistance is in the range of kilo ohms. That is at your hand. And you have to connect this to some load, whose load resistance is very small. For example, you have some audio amplifier, say for example. And what is the final load for an audio amplifier? It's a loudspeaker. Whose typical resistance is very small, say, say in the range of few uh, tens of ohms, say 50 ohms. Right. Typical speaker, say now, what you, what the speaker that you use normally, the resistance is in the range of say, say 50 ohms or something like that. Not in the range of kilo ohms. 50 ohms, 50 ohms, 20 ohms uh, speaker you have now, what you use today. We are happy with the generator voltage, but the problem is that uh, the associated output resistance is in the range of kilo ohms. Okay? Now suppose using a simple well, suppose a well, I am having a well, and suppose I connect. What is the problem? Using a well, if I connect this. As soon as you connect, the output voltage that is developed, that is delivered, drops significantly. Why? Because that, that voltage is how much? This time, this, uh, let, me, let it be say VL, this VL is given RL upon RL plus R out times AB times V in. And remember this ratio, RL upon RL, because RL is very, very small and R out is very, very large in the range of kilo ohms, ohms. So that ratio, now you are happy with A B times V. You are happy with A B times V. But now, once you connect this using a simple wire, then this, uh, this ratio is, say, in the range of uh, ohms by kilo ohms, so thousand times this. 
So you have, say, using say, three stages of amplification. Suppose you have three stages, right? Each, each stage will give you uh, a gain of, say, 10. 10, 10, 10. So, 1,000. Struggling a lot to achieve a gain of 1,000. 10, 10, 10,000. You are happy, right? From millivolt signal to your voltage signal, the range of volt. Now, once you connect this using a simple wire, Yes. And then this ohm by kilo. The struggle that we have done for the last few lectures, then this is completely lost. One second ohm by kilo, that means milli, milli into kilo, no gain. Mm -hmm. Can you get the point? What is the way out there? You have developed something, some voltage. Voltage. You don't require any further amplification, you are happy. Right? Output resistance is uh, moderate, moderately large kilo ohms. But the problem is that you have to connect this one, you have to connect this to a load resistance whose value is very small. What is the value? For common amplification, for common base, what is the value? For common emitter, common R out. Kilo ohms, RC, typical RC, kilo ohms. Right? And sometimes for say audio amplifier, your loudspeaker resistance is equal to say 20 ohms. 20 ohm speaker, 15 ohm speaker. Very small. So kilo by ohm, another ohm by kilo ohm. So understand, huh? What is the way? You don't require any further amplification. The only thing is that you have to find out something that will find that will <laughs> substitute that where. Right? So I have to search for a, for a configuration which which provides some or which uh, is having some high input resistance, which is a high input resistance and very small output resistance. Voltage will not bother about the voltage. Voltage is for, an, for a configuration whose input resistance is very, very large. Right? And the output resistance is typically small. That means what? Now, what we are doing? Yes, I think. What we are doing? This was AV. This was R out, right? And this side you have RL. You cannot directly connect. Okay? So what we are doing? You are using, you are inserting one common collector. Common collector amplifier. I should not use them anyway. So for the common collector, if I consider the input side, the input resistance was in the range of few hundreds of kilohms. So the voltage that is developed at the input of the common collector, what is that voltage? The input of this common collector, if I call this voltage to be say, say this voltage to be say, uh, V in test. What is that V in test? That V in test is equal to R in of uh, common collector divided by R in common collector R out into uh, this A B times V in. That ratio is very uh, close to unit. It's close to unit because this R in C C is much much larger as compared to R out. So that is almost equal to HV in, right? And the collector, common collector output, I mean the, this output volt is almost close to uh, this, if I call it V out test, here if I have this V out test, remember when, when you connect this internally, what you have? Internally you have resistance, no? And there this volt is V out test. 
Okay. So V out test is equal is close to evidence V. What is your V L? This load voltage. What will be this voltage? Load voltage. So now this R out C C and R L they are comparable. Now they are comparable. Now even if you have a voltage division kind of law, if you apply, so basically R L by R L plus R out C C. They are comp if they are comparable, then how much? Half fifty percent. At least not like uh, one thousand times. Two times. It's not by one by thousand. Rather one by two only. It's not like one by thousand only one by two. Common collector is the R L to be equal to the R of better position by. Common collector is equal. Not equal to R L. R L is equal to R L out C C K. बेसिक रिजन वाई गो फॉर कमन कलेक्टर एम्पलीफायर एंड So ultimately, this common current amplifier is identified. Okay. Oh, I think this one is with uh, R out with non-zero R S. Last time R S was zero. This time R out with zero R S. Simple calculation. If you go by this one, then ultimately what you are getting R out something like this. R pi plus R one parallel to parallel R S by one plus beta parallel R T parallel. Right. Collector amplifier is act as a is acting as a voltage buffer. Voltage buffer. That means there is no gain in the voltage. Common base amplifier was acting like a current buffer. There was no gain in the current. Rather, there is a decrease in current value. And for the common uh, collector amplifier, it is used as a voltage buffer, where the, uh, you have a large input resistance and uh, very small output resistance. Right. now we are in the process of calculating the the current gain associated with the common with a common can you expect some current gain there from common collector here something common collector current gain common collector can i get some current gain yes or no what is the input current base current or the output current emitter current base that means there is there should be some gain Right. One plus beta. Yes. This close to one. And if you do this calculation, then you find that this is practical. Actual calculation tells you R not by R not plus R D multiplied with one plus beta multiplied with that one. Now, if uh, these two parameters, this R not by R not plus R D, this is typically close to unity because R not is very large with respect to R D, and this is almost close to unity. This one, and uh, it should be less than one. So their product is close to unity, and with this assumption that R not per R one parallel R two much much greater than R I B, and R not much greater than R E, then your uh, current gain turns out to be uh, close to one plus beta. That is your good old uh, current gain for a common current amplifier. Base current, and we are going to base current. I I E upon I. Yeah. So we have studied uh, different types, different stages of amplifier, or different uh, amplifier configuration. The common emitter configuration, for which your input resistance, output resistance, gain, all of them are moderate. Common base configuration, for which the gain, I mean isolation is is moderate, moderately large, but the input resistance is very small, output resistance is moderately large. And for common collector, two extreme conditions. For common collector, the input resistance is very very large, output resistance is very very small. And there is no voltage gain associated with that, but still we use the common collector amplifier. Okay. Now sometimes we don't use those amplifiers in isolation, as I've already told you that uh, you are, you have identified one advantage of common base, one advantage of common collector. You can also explore the other advantages of common base and common collector when you go for the multi cascading, right? So you don't have a, uh, the amplifiers in cas in in isolation. Rather, you have 
say for example you have two stages of amplification control you have one amplifier present over there this amplifier is having some input resistance r in one this is the voltage gain of this amplifier ev1 and this is the output resistance r out one i i do have very familiar question in the in the semester examination like we have a common base amplifier with a voltage gain of 50 common base the voltage gain of 50 and uh, uh, this is uh, having some input signal for which uh, the source resistance is non zero and the uh, input signal fluctuation is a 5 millivolt pick to pick. right 5 millivolt pick to pick 50 uh, 30 something like that again what should be the output of the common base amplifier common base, common base. most of the cases I, am, I i get the answer like this 50 multiplied by 5 that means 7 50 Another very popular question. Suppose I have amplifier. Amplifier 1, amplifier 2. First is having a gain of 10, second stage is having a gain of 20. Right? First stage is having a gain of 10, second stage is having a gain of 20. Now, if I connect these two amplifiers in casket, what will be the overall gain? Option number 1, 10. Option number 2, 20. C 200, option number 4, none of them. What is your C? I am having two stages of amplifiers. One amplifier is having a gain of 10, second amplifier is having a gain of 20. Forget about everything, 10, 20. 10, 20. What should be the overall gain? What should be the overall gain? If I connect the first amplifier and second amplifier in the basket, option 1, 10, option 2, 20. Or, rather, uh, or I can also write the question like this, the uh, gain is how much? Gain is 200, greater than 200, less than 200, insufficient data. Mm. Less than 200. Less than 200. Why? There will be some coupling loss. There will be some loss. Yeah. Coupling loss will be there. And if I connect them properly, then you can minimize the coupling loss. Yeah. Coupling lo loss is inherently present. In variable you can connect. When you connect now, even if they are they are in the same, I mean so as I told you in the last example, the common collector and the load ratio. Suppose they are having the they are sharing the same resistance. The output ratio of the common collector and the load ratio, suppose they are the same value, say for 50 ohms. Right. But still there is a coupling loss of 50%. Like this. So, if I model these amplifiers, the amplifiers are modeled like this. Can you, okay, in, input side, you are well aware of, no? R in 1 is basically the R pi, R pi thing, or R pi 1 plus beta, depending upon the configuration. Now, let's make it. The output side, is it familiar or something uh, new to you? The output side? Hmm? Yeah. Is, it, is it the same or? Hopefully, you have not observed, no? we have not seen the uh, output side for these amplifiers yet. What you, typically, what we have seen? Uh, typically, we have seen like this now. Yeah. Typically, what you have seen? The output side, typically, we have seen like this now. Uh, 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 typically, what the scenario? Yes. But you know that this current source turned with a resistance is equivalent to a voltage source in series with a resistance. Circuit theory knowledge, isn't it? Current source in parallel resistance is equivalent to a voltage source series with a resistance. So okay, I can observe like this. So what did this thing? You have studied this one that current source GMP pi or R not. In parallel, and you, have, and you also know this equivalence. This source transmission, you also know this equivalence. Right? You also know this, but the thing is that you have to apply it. So, this is nothing new. We already studied this one. So, say that you are observing over there, this structure is not a new one. Okay? So, you have this structure AV1, V in 1, R out 1, and then you have the another. So, here I have applied Vs. 
and there I'm getting V out two, the final V out. There are so many stages of coupling, and accordingly you have to couple each and every coupling one after another. First coupling takes place over here. Whenever the input signal gets coupled to the input of the first amplifier one, what is that coupling loss? So V in one is not equal to V s. R in one by R s plus R in one times V s. Right now, if you are <coughs> so uh, typically R s range of uh, now since it's a voltage amplifier, so typically R s is small. So what is your idea? The I our idea is to make R in one as large as possible. Right, R in one as large as possible, so that this ratio is close to unity. It cannot be higher than unity, but it should be close to unity, less than unity but close to unity, because that is the loss. That is the inevitable loss. Once you connect this one, now so you have some loss. You have encountered some loss. You have to accept this loss. But what you can do, you can just minimize that loss, right? So R in one by R s plus R in one, that one fine. Then what about this V out one? And then V in one every time times V in one. That is a part of the amplifier one itself. I am not going into the details of that. I talked a lot regarding this. Huh? This calculation of the voltage gain. So many so many calculations. Also configurations with different biasing, different configurations. Once you get this AV on V in one, that is your output. V in one is your open circuit output voltage. Open circuit output voltage. If you just connect these two ports over there of your multimeter over there, meter, you just measure what is the voltage that is AV on V in one. If there is no current, that is open circuit voltage. But remember that is that has to be driven by some other load. This load can be An isolated load, or can be another stage of amplifier. So here, another stage of amplifier with another source resistor or another input resistor two. So what is your V out one then? Remember V out one under open circuit condition. This is equal to V times V one times V in one. But once you connect this uh, output of the first stage to the input of the second two, then the second stage is having is providing some load. Voltage degree, right? So accordingly, this V out one, which it's equal to V in two, that is equal to R in two upon R out one by R in two times V one times V in one. This is equal to this resistance divided by the summation of these two resistances, multiplied with this voltage, right? That is the second stage of coupling, right? Then comes the final stage over there. Then you have V out two is equal to how much? V out two is equal to R L by R out two plus R L times A V two times V in two. Okay, so what is gain? So overall voltage gain is V out two upon V S. So V out two upon V in two, V in two, V in two means V out one. So V out one upon V in one. And V naught upon V S, the product of these three. V out two upon V S is nothing but V out two upon V in two multiplied with V in two upon V in one multiplied with V naught upon V S. So the overall voltage gain is the product of two things, A V one and V two. That's great. Apart from that, you have three such. So for these two stages of amplifications, apart from that, you have such three stages of process. Each of them are less than one. Each of them are less than one. The, the maximum attempt that you can do is to make them closer to one, but can't be higher than one, can't be equal to one, isn't it? So this is less than one. Adding on, this is less than one. This is less than one. This is less than one. So their product is obviously less than one. So this is less than a v one times a v one times a v two. A v two. So if I have two such uh, amplifiers with gain of ten and twenty or ten and ten, the product. Is always less than that, or can't be twenty, can't be. Uh, it's, it's not the product of the individual gain. Okay, let's now before I conclude today, let's have some example. With this, I will conclude this unit also. VCC twelve volt, beta hundred, IB twenty microampere, R sixty kilo ohms, RE point five kilo ohms. 
ओके ओके दिस इज कैन आई पिक दिस वन हाँ नो व्हाट कॉन्फ़िगरेशन कॉमन कॉमन कलेक्टर कॉमन एमिटर कॉमन बेस कॉमन कलेक्टर व्हिच वन कॉमन कॉमन राइट दिस वन common base this is common emitter this is common base so i am just setting the prelude for our next class common emitter common base you will see a lot about this combination common emitter common base cascade this is known as cascode common emitter common base cascade cascade means ha cascading and common emitter common base cascade is known as cascode c a s c o d cascode and What is the voltage? Speed? Typical, I mean, approximate value. Sir, key value. I mean, one inch of one gram. No, no, no. Exact value. Value. Approximate value. Exact means approximate value. Don't say it like J out of one years. No. Just like calculating J out of one years. J out of one years. Yes. Not needed. कॉमन एमरिका With, with emitter is this. Is it typical again? Common emitter, common emitter amplifier with emitter resistance. With no resistance, what else again? Common emitter amplifier. If I have a copper without any emitter resistance, what else again? Minus E R C. Oh, what is it? Right? Here you have some emitter resistance connected. Minus R C upon R D. This minus R C upon R D. So R C is given as three kilos. R D is given as point five kilos. Typically, the gain is expected to be six. Right? Gain of six. Okay. GMRC for if if this is grounded. If this is grounded, if this is grounded, then GMRC. If it is not grounded, then minus RC upon RD. RC is given as three kilos. RD is given as point five kilos. Six minus RC upon RD. Okay. Second stage, a common common base stage. Common base stage. तो ये बस जीएस इनको आरसी जीएस इनको आरसी हाँ तो नो पेस्ट है जो माइनस आउट है आई फॉलोड द माइनर हाँ आई लाइक टू फाइंड आउट द गेम आरसी एब्सोल्यूट है लो आरसी थ्री आरसी थ्री किलोम्स व्हाट इज जीएम जीएम व्हाट इज द फॉर्मूला पर जीएम आईसी वाई बीटी आईसी वाई बीटी राइट आई आई बी इज गवन ट्वेंटी Uh, if I mill mill for just calculate what is my uh, GM then? IC is twenty micro into hundred. IC is two milliampere. Two milliampere. IC equal to 
Meter IV, 2000 micro, that means 2 milliampere. Like 25 gram. GM? Yeah. I see. Hmm. Two by twenty-five. Two by twenty-five. Two by twenty-five. Two by twenty-five. Multiplied with RC. RC. That is GM. That is GM, isn't it? So the gain or the common base state AV, CV, two by twenty-five multiplied with. Three thousand. Hundred by twenty-five. Sixty. Six thousand by twenty-five. Sixty. Isn't it? Three thousand by twenty-five. How much? No, two or two forty. Yeah. Two forty. Two forty. Two forty. Two forty. Two forty. Okay, let's see. What is total again then? Combined again? Counter. Combined. Combined again. Zero point zero four, yeah. It's coming up to one twenty or I mean zero point zero four. I see. I see. I see. One zero point zero eight. I want to ask zero point zero eight. Okay, let it be zero point zero eight. The product is one twenty to forty. Okay, minus six there. So product is one twenty to six. Six. Uh -huh. Will it be that case? No. No, no. Less. Less than this. Yeah, less how than much less? Uh, let's see. How much less? You have some coupling loss, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. What is the input range? There for the common emitter stage, uh -huh. we have this resistance already present. So that's why R pi plus one plus beta times R. That is the resistance of the uh, stage uh -huh. corner. Uh -huh. Common emitter amplifier. That is fifty kilo ohms. That is 50 kilohms. What is the input resistance for the common base? It is simply R pi upon R plus beta. Right? What is the output resistance of the common common emitter stage? R C. That is 3 kilohms. Okay? 3 kilohms. Okay. So now, only one stage, only one stage of coupling because there is no R S present. Only one stage output of the common emitter. To the input of the common base. AB of C multiplied with AB of CB with the input of the common base upon the output of the common plus input of the common base. What is the input of the common base? 25 ohms only. Output of the common, what is the output of the common the emitter? That is 3 kilo ohms. Right? The numerator you have uh, 25. The denominator is 3 kilos by 25. Right? Here you have 6 into 120 or, or let it be 240 if there is some error in the calculation. Right? And that ratio 25 upon uh, 3025. 25 upon 3025 is so small that their product is almost close to 120. 1 by 120. So the the gain that you have received through CB stage, the gain that you have received, three, it's close to 100, it's not exactly, that's why this sign is there. It's not exactly. 25 on 3, if you just calculate, 25 on 3025, what is the value? It's close to 1 by 120. So, so, 
the gain that you are getting out of this uh, this common wastage so one to into third may be this this entire struggle this uh, entire one, huh? one okay so uh, so close to that so this 120 here you have 120 so using a common base using a common base you are getting a gain from the from its input a gain of 120 right and while coupling the input from the output of the common emitter to the input of the common base there is a loss of by factor of 120 so eventually there is no gain eventually there is no gain and ultimately the product this product is 600. Uh, less than uh, close to this. Seems to be something. Yes, now the question is why should we go for common? So why should we connect, uh, connect another common base stage? Because life was good to the common image. Uh, that is the question. A very obvious question. A single stage, six, uh, gain of 6. Second stage, if you connect this and then the 120 and there's a coupling loss by 120, 1 by 120, product gets cancelled, only 6. So I should go for another common base, another common base stage. Seems to be silly, na? Why should you go for that? To answer this question, you have to attend the next class. So why? Why common base is also important? Not from the gain, part, from the, not from the perspective of the gain, but from the perspective of bandwidth. Bandwidth. Listening to this term first. Yes, so this, this with this, let, let me conclude our discussion on that particular unit. In this case, we have not considered anything related to frequency. Uh, uh. We have made all those frequency like capacitors, we have made it inactive. But now in the next class onwards, we will move into the, the frequency response characteristics of the amplifiers. Frequency response characteristics. You know that there are few attributes of amplifier as I mentioned. One was the gain of the amplifier, second one was the input resistance, output resistance, then the swing, swing, power consumption, and the most important thing is the, the band. Now, everything is good for a common emitter amplifier. Again, moderate input resistance, moderate output resistance, but the only problem associated with the common emitter stage was that it provides a very narrow bandwidth. That's why if you use a single common emitter amplifier in isolation, although it can provide a very good gain, but over a very wide range of frequency. That's why you have to connect something, some other stage, along with the common emitter stage, preferred in the common base stage obviously, which actually takes into account that particular problem and, and have this combination of common emitter, common base task is what we have observed today. For about 6 and 100, let's, let's assume that both of these two stages, they are giving you the same gain. Uh, both of them are giving the same gain. So, this is 120, this is also 120. But still then, if you, if you uh, uh, connecting casket, but is overall gain, only 120. So you are not getting a gain of two stages. But if you connect the common after the common emitter stage is over, then you can also which you cannot have using a single common emitter stage. We will discuss in the next class. While we move into the next unit of our discussion.